Greetings and welcome back to part four of the Make Your Own RPG. Let's go ahead and dive in, and in this part we are just going to work on drawing a lot of different things. Uh, not pixel art or actually coloring or anything like that. Just what I mean is we're going to set up the draw events for a couple different objects. The first one that we're going to do is go into your OBJ fade, and we're going to uh, set this up so that every time you run into an enemy and every time you end a battle, you will fade between the screens, making it look a little bit nicer. So let's add a create event, and let's drag in some code. Now this isn't too complicated. Um, we only need to set up a few variables in here. Uh, so we'll just make sure we comment that correctly. So we're just going to use alpha, and we're going to say fade. And that's really all we need there. Then we're going to add an event. It's going to be draw, and then just draw again. And we're going to drag in some code. Now there's a little bit more here, but not that much. So if you just follow along, it should work just fine. And we'll test it afterwards to make sure. So alpha equals clamp plus. And these values are ones that I have uh, played around with and made sure that they worked. I actually got this uh, specific idea from Sean Spaulding, who has some really good videos out there as well, if you haven't seen them. Uh, this I got specifically from him, and it works pretty nicely. And so what we're doing here is we're just setting up a few values so that um, it will set itself to a certain value, and then it will begin to change over time. And so the screen will go black right away, and then it will come back to being uh, full, fully colored. And as soon as that's the case, it'll actually destroy the object. So the way we need to do that is we're going to set a couple colors here. Uh, we're going to set that, and we're going to set the alpha, which is the transparency, with our variable called alpha. And we're going to draw a rectangle. We're going to say room width by room height. That way you can actually use this in any room that you want. And set it to 1. And if you wanted to actually draw different things, like a circle, or maybe draw different objects, or certain sprites, uh, you could do that too. And that way you can really give a, a very unique feel to your transitions. But that's really all we need right now. Just make sure it's visible and persistent, and the depth is a pretty large negative number. And that way it gets created as soon as you bump into an enemy, and when you win a battle, and it will just fade nicely between the screens, just like that. And you can set the fade rate specifically uh, right here. You can do more or less, whatever you want to do. So that's great. That would be the fade between just a nice little, well, it just looks really nice. Next, we're going to jump into the battle controller. And we are going to uh, set up all of the draw events that we're going to need for this. And I recommend watching this part and the next part uh back to back if you can because we're going to set up everything in the draw event but you're not going to be able to do anything just yet so uh, just stay tuned for that next part so go ahead and drag in a draw event and some code and the first one will just be oh you can see it right there uh, <clears throat> it's going to be drawing the battle menu options and you remember we set up the battle menu options in the create event here and you can set up as many as you want but we've just got attack defend and escape so the way you do this, um, if you don't know what a loop is, uh, we're about to go through it, and we are going to specifically be using a for loop. Now this could be really complicated depending on if you've seen it before or not. Uh, copy along exactly what I'm doing, and I'll explain it as we as we get going. They're super versatile and useful, and uh, for loops are absolutely essential for what we're doing here. So, okay, let me take a break here and tell you what we're doing. So basically, we're going to create a loop that says, go and do this a certain amount of times. And the, the amount of times it's going to happen is right here. Uh, it starts at zero, and we're going to say, continue until this condition is met. So until i is less than the array length 1d. And so the battle menu, uh, it has, it's an array. And so I'm using a function and saying, what is the actual length of this array? And the actual length is 2, 0, 1, 2. So it gets that number, and it says, go through and do everything inside as many times as you need to. And we're going to be drawing the text here. And we're going to draw it 200 times i 
plus 450 and 660 for the Y coordinate. And the string will actually be battle menu I. Because that's what makes for loops so versatile is you've got a number that's always changing, which works great for displaying data in arrays. So we're going to display attack, defend, and then escape all uh, in this one loop. And we're going to put in uh, if I equal to battle menu selection. So this will be if the player is actually choosing um, the, the battle, whatever one they're choosing, we're going to draw a line underneath that. We're gonna, and these are coordinates and numbers that I've just picked out that I know work, and you can adjust them depending on what your layout and what you're doing and all that. But you can just copy here to see that it's going to be working just fine. 680, and there we go. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I did not increase the font size. Okay, hopefully that's legible now, and I'll increase it from now on. So that's the first one we're going to set up. Next one is going to be health bar and names, and you can see it right there. We'll just go through copying it. Uh, not, not new event. I'm going to add in more code. And I'll explain it as we go. That way I just don't copy and paste. Because I could copy and paste this whole thing, but I think that it's very useful to actually copy along with me as I type because then you get an idea about what exactly is going on and why it's working. Um, copying and pasting code, sure, you can and you can you can do that, but if you really want to learn how to customize your game for whatever you're doing, typing along is, is by far the best. So we're going to be drawing uh, a function called health bar here, and it's really nice that Game Maker has this built in, and it just you can put in any value, and then it just draws a health bar with colors that you define. And you can actually overlay sprites on this, so you could overlay hearts or a sword if you wanted to put like their health or mana in a sword or something like that. It's really versatile, and I really like this function. And you just say where it needs to go and what value needs to be displayed and then it does that. So we're going to say uh, this is going to be the enemy health specifically so we're going to say dot x minus 20 on the enemy that we've got same thing uh, dot y over here and this is just going to be putting the health bar in a good position that I have uh, tested before and know it works nicely for what we're trying to do. So minus 60 and I'm going to press enter just so that we have everything stays on this screen. Now we're going to put in, in parentheses here because we're actually going to be doing a little bit of math. So current health, enemy ID dot max health. And then we're going to multiply it by 100 because the value that actually is going to be displayed needs to be from 0 to 100. And what this does is it divides and then multiplies so it sets it in the right format for this health bar function to display. And these are colors that you can change to whatever you like. And just say zero, true, true. Just border, stuff like that. And then we're going to do draw enemy name. So we're going to draw text. And we're going to put this at the enemy as well. Dot y plus 35. And we're going to just do enemy ID dot name. We're going to grab that. So make sure you've set up the name for the enemy. And then we're also going to draw the player's name. Okay, great. So that is the name that we need right there. Next, let's drag in another piece of code. And we're going to be doing, drawing the circle over whatever has been selected, or whichever enemy has been selected to attack. So because you're going to be able to press attack and then choose which enemy you actually want to, ch to strike, uh, this is going to be saying if we're in combat and we're selecting the enemy. Because you can also use items and stuff. And so it'll be, depending on, you only want to draw the circle over the enemy when you're actually ready to attack them. And this is just one line of code. And we're just saying draw at, at the enemy, 32 radius for the circle and set it to true, which is great. Okay. Uh, the reason that we are doing different ones, uh, different code snippets here is not because it affects how the code actually runs. 
Uh, all of this is going to run at the same time. This just makes it really easy for you to be able to label and organize your code so you can see here exactly what each part of the code is doing and it just looks a lot nicer and if you come in for debugging or you have any issues with anything you can come in and say uh, my battle menu is not being drawn correctly and oh look right here that's where the problem is you could put it all in one and sometimes that's okay but uh, it's nice if you split it up all right now we're gonna draw the action bar the thing that ticks up and when it's full both the player and the enemy will attack. So the first one, um, this will be for the, the character. And again, we're gonna be drawing a health bar. And like I said, health bar is super versatile because all you do is you say, I want this value to be displayed in a certain format and it's great for any value that goes up or goes down. So this is gonna be the character. So it's gonna be X minus 25 obj sarah dot y plus 60 obj sarah dot x plus 15 dot y ooh, plus 70 and then again brackets in here we're going to say current energy ooh, current energy divided by max energy times 100 and that will give us the value that we want and here I'm changing the colors from the last one. And if you want to change the colors, you can do C underscore, and then you can actually look at all the pretty colors that they've got there. And they've got a lot of options. And you can always actually make your own as well if you wanted to. So we're going to draw a health bar one more time. And we'll comment this. Uh, this will be the enemies. And this will be the last thing that we're going to do here. And then I'm going to press play and just make sure that everything's working fine. Y. Enemy ID dot current energy D dot max energy times one hundred C dark green. And I know there's a lot here. Um, we're we're typing an awful lot. And hopefully you can follow along. If you get lost, you have any questions or anything, ask me, ask me in the comments. Um, I will get back to you as soon as I can. Let's go ahead and press play. Now, I don't expect this to work just yet. Uh, at the very least, you're not gonna be able to select anything. But if we run into an enemy, awesome, okay. So now we've got health bar, action gauge, uh, this is her action gauge, and this is the health bar and action gauge for the Master Ninja, who's got a name, and we have the menu down here, which is exactly what we were going for. You see that red line is going to be over whatever we're choosing to do. So that will end it for now. We've drawn everything we need to. In the next part, we're actually going to start going through menu traversal and being able to select different options and maybe start even attacking the enemy. So thank you very much for joining me in this part. I hope to see you guys next time. If this was helpful, I hope you'll like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for other tutorials, please hit me up. Leave a comment in the comment section or send me a message. I love to hear from you guys. Until next time, I will see you later.